Welcome back to the Uranium Fever channel. Today's video is a comprehensive starter guide for the upcoming Nuka World on Tour update. I'll be covering everything you need to know before the update launches on the 6th, with an interactive map of the fairgrounds showing where you can find the 4 new events, new NPCs, vendors and other points of interest. We're also getting new daily and weekly challenges, the Nuka Cade and the free camp build mode for camp building. Let's get started. A lot of the information in this video was found thanks to Cat Duchess Flame, who compiles some excellent web article guides for Fallout 76, and the data miner Sugar Bombs Rads, who routinely provides us with a first look at new items coming to the game. Also, a big thank you to Coffee888 for providing me with extra footage from the PTS. Please give them a follow, their links are in the video description. This video is timestamped if there's a particular section you want to navigate to, but first, let's go through the new update's location. Nuka World on Tour is a permanent addition to the game, with a map marker added to the Ash Heap region. Located west of Lewisburg, fast travelling will spawn you here, roughly in the centre of the fairgrounds. Four new public events are the standout feature with this update. Look out for our dedicated event guides as I'll be going through each in more detail, but here's where these can be found. Most Wanted is located at the Wild West Showdown, where Gunter needs us to play the role of outlaws in his Wild West show, hunting down the town citizens and stashing their looted belongings in a getaway wagon before defending it against the robotic arm of the law and the sheriff. In Spin the Wheel, players join Buttle and Cappy in the big top tent to become a contestant during the Spin the Wheel game show. Tunnel of Love sends players into a long abandoned mineshaft to help Mr. Lovely repair a romantic ride. These first three events have been added to the public events list, so look out for a notification on your screen when each is active. The fourth event though can also be triggered by players. So, last but not least, seismic activity is found at the Nuka Launcher Coaster once players have launched a nuke at Abandon Mineshaft 2. This functions in a similar way to other endgame bosses. There is a mini questline that is attached to this event, but it isn't necessary to start the event which I'll touch on later. Look out for our event guides for these as there's a lot to cover, but that should give you an idea about where each of these could be found. Another point of interest for players is the player trading post, which is found next to the nuke arcade. The name is a little bit misleading, as this isn't actually a vendor, but actually where you can find a script machine, scrap box, stash box, ammo box, weapons and armor workbenches, chem benches, and a power armor station. So if you need to make any repairs, craft some items, or access your stash box, then this is the place to go. There is another set of workbenches which can be found at the bottom of the park, opposite Dell Walsh's trailer, which is located here. But first, let's talk about the Nuka Cade. Another new feature, the Nuka Cade is essentially an old school arcade that can be found between the most wanted and spin the wheel event locations in the large bottle shaped tent. Inside you'll find four different arcade games that you can play to earn Nuka Cade points. For those who played Fallout 4, three of these were first introduced in the Nuka World DLC, these being Bandit Roundup, Nuka Zappa Race and Wacker Komi. And now they're back with a fourth all new game, Bottle Blaster. Each plays very differently and will reward the player with Nuka Cade points depending on performance which can then be redeemed at the prize terminals found inside the tent. There are 12 unique rewards that are redeemable on the terminal from 5 different prize levels, including the signature first zapper and plans for each arcade game so you can actually play these from the comfort of your own camp. You need to save up those new K points for those though. Luckily, points can also be granted for successfully completing the 4 public events as well, with 5,000 points granted per successful event. Something to note too, there is a limit of 100,000 points to have on your person at one time. But the Nuka Cade is also where you can find a lot of the new NPCs which were added with this update. Nuka World on Tour is adding a selection of new characters and vendors who can be found at the fairgrounds. Up first we have Bruno the Strongbot, who can be found patrolling inside the Nuka Cade. You can have a brief chat with him to start a miscellaneous side quest, Play Bottle Blaster, at the Nuka Cade. Heading outside, the Nuka Cade tent is where you can find Pete Myers, and close by his sister Patricia Myers. Pete can be found sitting at a table on the left side of the Nuka Cade, and speaking with him will start the quest What Slept Beneath, which is the quest line that's related to seismic activity. I won't be overtly ruining this, but it essentially will help to explain the lore and backstory of the Ultrasite Titan, and will take roughly an hour to complete. His sister Pat can also be found walking between the Nuka Cade building and the trading post. Talking to her, she has dialogue options that cover the lore of Nuka World on tour, if you're looking to learn more about the story behind this update. Lady G, the fortune teller, can be found just outside the Nuka Cade entrance, on the right hand side this time. For 50 caps, this robo brain will tell you your fortune. The fortune teller note can either grant plus 2 to luck for 30 minutes, or it can actually subtract 2. There are 42 different notes to collect from Lady G if you're so inclined, however these cannot be displayed. 
Finally, we have Gunter, who can be found sitting to the right of the Most Wanted event area. He will explain how the Most Wanted event runs, but he also has some other unique dialogue options that include speech checks. So, if you want to unlock these, you'll have to make sure that you're running unyielding armor or food buffs if you want to know everything that he has to share. Alongside these new NPCs, there are also four new vendors. Betty Hill is a ghoul vendor who can be found next to the Tunnel of Love event, location in her trailer marked here. Chloe the Clown can be found floating between Most Wanted and the Nukecade, and this very hard to miss. At the bottom of the park, next to that second set of workbenches, is where you will find the paramedic Del Walsh. And finally, pre-made Nuka Cola drinks can be purchased from vending machines behind the Nuka Cade, which is found here. Going through each vendor then, starting with Betty, she's your best option primarily for a selection of Nuka World apparel and pre-made food. She sells the Bottle and Cappy jacket and jeans, Nuka Cola jacket and jeans, Nuka World jacket and jeans, Western Outfit, and Western Outfit and Chaps. The pre-made food she sells is ant meat, ramen burgers, carnival pie, cave cricket meat, cotton candy bites, crispy cave cricket, fried red roach on a stick, fried scorpion on a stick, funnel cake, grilled rad toad, gulper stuffed foot, nuka bottle dog, nuka dog, rad rat meat, rad rat steak, rad scorpion kebab, roasted ant, and yagwe pastry. If you want to learn more about the new Nuka World and Tour food and drinks, and what each provides, then check out my full guide covering these. Chloe the Clown sells the paddle ball and plans for the bottle balloon and cappy balloon, as well as a selection of Nuka Cola themed junk, including a souvenir bowl, souvenir magnet, burger box, souvenir toy car, souvenir glass, souvenir coffee cup, souvenir sloth toy, and souvenir teddy bear. Del Walsh is actually in Fallout 4, which is a fun little detail, appearing in a holotape recording the paramedic report. In Fallout 76, he actually appears in the flesh food, and this time around he sells a pretty standard selection of chems. These include Addictol, Antibiotics, Berry Mantats, Blood Pack, Buff Out, daddy -O, Disease Cure, Grape Mantats, Healing Salve, Insect Repellent, Medex, Mentats, Psycho, Stimpak, Stimpak Diluted, and Stimpak Super. Finally, those Nuka Cola vending machines will sell pretty much every variation of Nuka Cola you can find in game. Nuka Cherry, Nuka Cola, Nuka Cola Dark, Nuka Cola Orange, Nuka Quantum, Nuka Cola Twist, Nuka Cola Wild, and Nuka Grape. Alongside unique rewards from events, the new Cade and Vendors, there is also a selection of generic rewards that are obtainable from all four of the new events. There are a total of 14 of these in total, including plans for four different bottle and cappy statues. Two backpack flares, a small robot, and the cappy clapper are also obtainable. A paint for the super sledge next with the cappy smasher, as well as Nuka Cade posters and the plan for the Nuka Cola bottle kiosk. This actually has six different variations. Also, look out for these two with a set of eight Nuka Cola ad barriers. These are actually much smaller than I was expecting. There are four different stalls which come with the plan for Nuka Cola stalls, with Nuka Cola, Nuka Cola Quantum, Nuka Cherry, and Nuka Grape variations. The same variations apply to the four Nuka Cola balloons you can get from this plan. There are well over a hundred rewards coming with this update, so check out my guide going over all of them if you want to see everything that's coming with Nuka World on tour. Next though, let's take a look at Season 11. Alongside Nuka World on Tour, we also have Season 11 Nuka World, granting even more Nuka-themed scoreboard rewards. One of these is the new camp ally, Leo Petrov, who's obtainable at rank 35 on the scoreboard, and he's a new ally which will function in a similar fashion to previous camp light allies, except this time with a Nuka World themed twist. He's described as being a loyal company man, Leo is a Nuka agent and comes with a heavily decorated work desk, filled with Nuka Cola themed collectibles. He comes with a pretty stocked inventory, full of various different items selling plans, basic weapons, some camp items, junk, and some other consumables like stim packs. We will go through his inventory and fall in just a moment, but first, let's take a look at the buffs that this ally can give you. Leo can buff you in many different ways, but you'll be limited to one of these once per day. Each will last for around 30 minutes and will stack with your other buffs. He can boost charisma, endurance, perception, or luck by two, increase your max AP and improve AP regeneration, as well as adding 50 HP, rad resistance, and increase your disease resistance as well. Alongside this though, you can also obtain a well-rested bonus too, by just having him in your camp. Taking a look at his inventory now, starting off with plans you can purchase. These include plans for the Nuka Cola Wall Clock, Nuka Cola Dark, Nuka Girl Area Rug, a Nuka Cola Machine, and two grenade plans for Nuka Grenade and Nuka Quantum Grenade. These won't be legendary though. He also sells a ton of junk that's mostly themed around Nuka Cola, with a souvenir car, coffee cup, glass, bowl, cup, and clean toy truck also purchasable. 
a magnifying glass, chalk, lighter, cigarette carton, military grade duct tape, and a silver watch bring up the rest of his junk inventory. Weapons next. He does sell loose nuclear grenades and quantum grenades, but also a selection of basic weapons. These won't be legendary though. And finally for Leo's inventory we have the other category. A bit of a mix here, but you can pick up round sunglasses, the Nuka Tapa holotape game, bobby pins, a broken pro snap camera, stealth boy, pre-war food, and free variant stim packs. If you want to see all the unique scoreboard rewards coming with season 11, then you can check out my guide which cover all of these in detail. But lastly for today, let's go through all the new daily and weekly challenges. This new update is bringing a host of new daily and weekly challenges. These can be split into categories, so let's go through them. Starting with the new free cam challenge event, this is coming to the Atomic Shop from December 6th on launch day. And this means that there are new daily and weekly challenges to complete, but the added feature this time is you need to use free cam. The free cam challenge event starts on the 6th then, and will last until the 15th. Free cam is the new toggle feature coming to camp building, which will allow players to detach the camera from their character and subsequently build with less restrictions. Here's a list of all the new challenges related to free cam. To be honest, most of them seem pretty rudimentary, and they aren't particularly different to existing building challenges. We're also getting a selection of Nuka World and Tour themed challenges though, and these include completing each event, using photo mode to take a photo in Camden Park, take a camera photo of the Ultrasight Abomination, use photo mode to take a look at Nuka World on Tour, and take a camera photo at Nuka World on Tour, as well as collect any flavour of Nuka Cola and drinking each Nuka Cola flavour. Nuka Connoisseur is a Nuka World on Tour event that's actually coming, and it actually shares all the aforementioned challenges of drinking each flavour, as well as a generic challenge of drinking Nuka Cola types. Christmas is also bringing a selection of challenges too. So these include Killer Festive Scorch one on a team, Killer Festive Scorch one on a team and wearing a costume, Collect or Scrap Coal, Killer Rad Sag, Consume an Alcoholic Beverage one on a team, and finally Consume an Alcoholic Beverage one on a team and wearing a costume. With that though, we've reached the end of today's video. That brings us to the end of this starter guide for Nuka World on Tour. I hope you found this guide easy to follow and it will help you get started when the update launches on the 6th. I'll be following this over the coming days with dedicated guides for all four missions that will go into every detail you need to know about the new events as well as a guide for the Nuka Cade. As always, we will also have camp builds, tutorials, lore videos and other content going out too in the not too distant future, so subscribing and turning on the bell icon is definitely the best way to stay up to date and ensure you don't miss a video. If you enjoyed this particular video, then why not drop a like on it as well. With that said, I am off. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.